Welcome back to Unstoppable Agent. This is the show that real estate agents come to build their wealth, build their business, and build a life of impact and significance. Work on your skill, but anybody can work on their skill. It's about, are you really intentionally setting your goals on what you're trying to achieve in three to five, 10 years? I'm Brian White. I'm an associate broker with EXP Realty in the uh, in the Dallas area. And I love the show because I get to interview some of the top agents in the country. These are folks that have been business builders. They've had the highest level of success. And we're talking about folks that are in the top 2% of real estate agents across the country. And they're sharing their success. They're sharing their tips. They're sharing the things that help them be successful. So we do this each and every week. If you haven't already, hit subscribe so you get notifications when we do these. I'm excited today because I've got uh, Jack Sai from Los Angeles with us. Jack, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, so the thing I want to start with actually is I want to start celebrating you because you're here because you've got a successful business and you're thriving and growing in what's been a challenging market over the last year in particular. So congratulations on, on your success. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's it's fun because, you know, at, at EXP, you not only get a uh, trophy, but you also get some uh, financial rewards. So it's you've got a successful business, you've got a trophy, and then you get Get uh, stock awards along with it, so it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, for sure. It feels good when you get it. It's not like where before you really just only get a trophy. A good congratulations, but yeah, it yeah. feels good. Yeah, I mean, tr trophies are nice. I don't mind getting them, but it's a lot more fun to also get paid. So it's a win all the way around. Jack, so I want to jump right in and uh, really give our folks some meat, some some tips right out of the bat. So if I were to ask you, what three things would you tell a new agent right now in this market? I would say a couple of things if I were to really start again. Number one thing I would be working on is knowing your why. Like okay. Why are we getting into the business? Because some new agents, they get in, they don't really need to. They're doing it part time. Yeah. Or maybe they have um, their spouse making good income and nothing wrong with that. But just set your goal on how many homes that you would like to sell. And also, more importantly, what is that going to bring you in your life? What are you going to buy? What are you going to get? Who are you going to become? I think that's very important. So definitely know your goal, create a dream board and make your daily activity connect to that goal. I think that's very important. Yeah. Assuming, say, assuming if somebody that's doing it full time, they really want to thrive in this business, then they got to work on their mindset too. Okay. It's good. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about your why, it's funny to, to focus on a why because then you also think there's actually a thing that go five whys. So ask why five times. Okay, great. Maybe your kids, somebody's kids are your why, your spouse or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, why is that? A, why are they important? Why are your kids important? And then you ask again and then you ask again because the, the way I was raised or good or bad, you really get down to the pain or the heart behind yeah. what it is that's important. Yeah. Because I would say this business is very simple. It's just okay. not easy. Yeah. Right? And I know what you're talking about. I think there's a video on YouTube by Dean Graziosi and uh, seven level deep asking yeah. why. And that's where you can really find out your pain point or your play reason why you want to work hard to achieve your goal. That's good. That's good. So you, so that was your first one. What was tip number two? I would say finding somebody that can guide you and mentor you or coach yeah. you. Yeah. So it's kind of like I always tell myself and also other agents that join us. Uh -huh. is that imagine if you're learning to swim and if you want to learn to be an Olympic swimmer, right? Or a pro NBA player whatsoever. Yeah. Like if you want to be like that, what would you do first? You can either read books, uh, you can watch on YouTube. And if you, let's say, you really want to be a professional swimmer, then the best way to learn is to jump in and swim. And first of all, survive, right? And But more likely, you can pretty much survive and maybe swim a little bit. But for you to really go pro, then you need to have somebody to teach you. And real estate is the same. Like it's having good. somebody who has been there and done that, to either mentor you to because they, they have done what you have done. So you can just follow that path and get your feet wet, get started creating the habit and the mindset that you need it and or spend money to hire a coach. I think that's the good part about being with the XP because there you'll get an assigned mentor. Yeah. And on top of that, likely the people who are sponsoring the company, they've been in the business for a couple of years or they, are, they have some sort of success. So those are people that can help you out to help you jumpstart your business. And I think so. I think it's brilliant for, from a couple of perspectives. One is other people have already made all the mistakes you're going to. Other people have already done all the wrong things. You don't mm -hmm. have to, don't feel the need 
to bang your head against the wall repeatedly. My, my wife will tell you that I'm talking to myself right now. Right. Stop banging your head against the same walls that other people have already have already done. But you don't need to, right? Somebody else, they say success leaves clues. Mm -hmm. So find someone that, that has the same clues. The Masters was, was this month. And so I, like literally everybody there had a coach. Any of them mm -hmm. had a coach with them. Like their caddy is actually giving them advice right there. There are others that are while they're playing. And these are the best in the world. They've mm -hmm. still got people helping them. So we all need coaches and accountability at every phase of our career. Don't, don't feel like, oh, I've sold 20, 50, 250 homes. Those people still have coaches. There's still people ahead of them on the race that can help them get to the next step. So that's really good advice. Absolutely. I would say, I would add, like to add on this as well. I think for most of us, we were taught when we were raised, we're taught to be a good kid, good person, yeah. uh, good human, good worker, right? Yeah. Maybe good entrepreneur, but actually, no, we would really never really taught to be a good entrepreneur through our school system. And uh, so in order to be a good salesperson, which we are essentially, we need to learn how to become a good salesperson. Yeah. And in order to be that, we got to be able to educate ourselves. And first of all, have a mental picture as to, let's say, if I want to take 30 listing, 50, 100 listing a, a year, like what kind of person? do we need to be so that client will want to work with us how can we improve ourselves and then work on that on a daily basis just get one percent better every single day and that's where a coach will step in and watch where you're going so this way like what you were saying earlier we don't have to reinvent the wheel and just instead stand on the shoulder of a giant yeah so good and that also touches then i'll let you get to your uh, your third point here but uh, you hit on it a minute ago and there's this idea of be do have and uh, so often we think with we start with the things we want to have or uh, hey i want to earn this much or i want to have this car this house this whatever not that there's anything wrong with things necessarily but it's really we need to think through and going back to your why think through okay who's who do I need to become? How do I become the kind of person that has access to those things, that's able to do those things, that's able to sell this many homes so that you can have those things? So you've got to figure out who you need to be so you could do the things and then have have the things. So being a coach helps you at every stage of, of that process. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's very important. Actually, I think throughout my 14 year of career, I've heard of that phrase many times, be, do, have, be, do, have. And then that's probably first five to 10 times, okay, I kind of get it, but I don't get it. <laughs> it's so confusing. And then I remember one time I went to talk to one of my mentors. His name is Thatch Nguyen. It's a big time investor, realtor, very successful person in Seattle. And uh, he, I asked him, hey, Thatch, like I hear this all the time, be, do, have, what does that mean? And then he says, Jack, be, do, be, who focus on who you're being means focusing on how you're feeling at all times. Yeah. And that's why it's important to do gratitude uh, or grat gratitude in the morning and to visualize in the morning to kind of feel that way. So that way you can take the action that you need to do and then you'll have the result that you want to have. So good. If you're watching this, I don't know if you're like me and it sounds like it sounds like Jack was like this at one point too. And I've read, I've read Miracle Morning. I've done any number of things about the importance of gratitude, meditation, and quiet time, exercise, all of the, all the morning rituals. And you're kind of like, eh, whatever. It, really, that is, right, as we go through these interviews, you find successful person after successful person that says, okay, I've got these habits. And uh, okay, you, you can call it frou frou, you can say it's a bit of fluff or whatever. But when successful person after successful person says that and follows through and they have those habits, well, there, there's truly something to that. W whether it's just the discipline or there's more to it, then uh, you, you got to at least start taking those steps because it leads you down a path of success. Absolutely. It's really good. I would yeah. say number three would be like, a, I would say time management time management slash yeah. follow through your word i uh, have integrity yeah like when you're newer a lot of time like we go into the office or sometimes we work from home we open up our we turn on our computer we're like okay what do we do now yeah and so definitely have a schedule right and which my schedule is basically get up around seven o'clock and do my meditation, visualization, exercise, do all that. And I do my meeting at eight and start prospecting around nine-ish. 
and sometimes there are some Zoom call and uh, lead follow up all get to around 12 o'clock. I had then have a lunch. I don't eat lunch. I don't eat breakfast. I have fast from 12 to 8. So I eat lunch at 12. I get back to work around 1, 31 and uh, do some admin and then do either more prospecting agents or clients and or I'm going to appointments. And sometime I will work a little, a little later. I'm still working on that. <laughs> Me and my wife, we work together. We're like, you know what? We need to cut off the time that our family time. So we're still working on that. We're not perfect. But key thing is to have a schedule and follow it. And uh, one more thing is, I think we touched on earlier about who you're being, right? Yeah. I took this class called Landmark. Okay. And from that class, I learned a lot about having integrity. Integrity, I don't mean that you don't lie to your client, don't steal money. That's the given. Okay. The integrity we're talking about is integrity with your work. Do what you say you will do, especially what you promise other people and almost what you promise your, oh, also what you promise yourself. It's good. Because yeah. you know, if you don't do what you say you would do, then nothing really makes sense. You don't really have to plan anything because whatever you say is not going to happen anyways. And that's where go back to who you're being. If you can beat a person with integrity, do what you say you'll do, people will respect you and you'll have self-confidence. And that's very important. It's really good. I think so often we say yes to other people and we say yes to their face. Maybe we say yes to ourselves. We're afraid of hurting them. We don't want to hurt their feelings. We're trying to be kind. But then we say no to them later when they're mm. not around. We say no to them at the last minute. We bail on them yeah. at the last minute and not going to the thing when really the kinder thing was to have told them to had integrity up front and let your yes be yes and your no be no. So when you get asked up front, hey, if you're not going to go, peace, just don't go. Yeah. Ver versus, because then you hurt people's feelings down the line and then they're disappointed because you because you let them down, however, whatever that was. I think that's, Jack, I think that's, that's great advice. Yeah. Like, that's great yeah. advice for everything you shared is great advice for being a human and just being a great person. So mm -hmm. to be, do, have, right? You're talking about the person and how do you be a great person? And then if you're a great person that works hard, you'll end up having a great business. People want to work with people who they know and like trust. Yeah. If, and especially if you can deliver every time that you say you're going to be there, you're going to do it. And people respect you. People want to work with people like that. And yeah. very interesting. I know this is a very simple concept. You say it's being a good human, but really just look around. Like how many people really keep up with their word or show up on time? Not yeah. that many. If we just simply, if we just simply do that, we'll be, we'll be stronger than most of the people out there already. Or you, different. <laughs> you, we can all go make a fortune if we just, uh, in the handyman business, if we mm. just show up when we said we were going to. I don't know yeah. if it's like LA, but, but here you get, you schedule a handyman appointment. You're like, all you had to do is show up. Yeah. Uh, like, it's a super low bar. At any rate, so, Jack, that was awesome. It was super great. And like I said, just great tips on being a great human. I'd love to, so you didn't start at EXP. So you've been in the business, you said 14 years. Tell me a little, just a little bit about your journey and then what caused you to join. My journey, when I started 2009, actually I graduated, I said, let me backtrack a little bit. I went to college in 2003. Okay. And then my father was a real estate developer. Okay. And uh, so from 2003 to 2007, I look at his life. I'm like, oh, so chill. <laughs> Cause the market was really good. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, even when he's, just start framing the property. He says pretty much sold already. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. so chill. And I look at his schedule, it's just really relaxing. So when I graduated, I'm like, you know what? I think I can do real estate. And also I read this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to work forever. I want to have passive income. Yeah. So I can I don't have to work till I'm like 60, 70, 80s, right? And so when I graduated, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do real estate. And I graduated in 07. <laughs> so I was helping my dad a little bit just to run errands, translate some basic little things. I didn't really know much. I was like 22, 23 at the time, right? 22. And, but 2009, I was like, you know what? If I want to get into real estate, I want to get a real estate license so I can see deals yeah. firsthand and then I can know the basic of it. So I got my license. And however, around that time, 2000, basically after 2007, my dad didn't develop anything. So again, I was just running errands and stuff. And in 2010, I think they, they left the country. So that was the time I'm like, you know what? Or 2011, something like that. I'm, I need to get into this full time. I can either go back to Taiwan or I can do something here. And I'm like, I can probably make more money here than I want to be here. 
So 2011, 12, somewhere around there, I got into a coaching program. Okay. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Oh, I went to a seminar. Can I mention the name or it doesn't really matter? Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I went to a Mike Ferry seminar okay. because my first company promoted. They said, if you were to go, when you do deal, we'll refund you the money. I'm like, okay, I want to learn how to sell homes the proper way. And it's Good. pretty much free. Let's go. And when I went, I saw Mike was interviewing people. Be like, hey, how many homes did you sell? last year and at that time i only wanted to make 50 grand because i was like 23 24 right? it was good money for me back then and she says oh I, the agent says i make 200 000, sell 20 home I'm like oh that's a lot of money and then he asked the next person oh i sold 50 home i make half a million i'm like oh that's a lot of money <laughs> and then he asked the next person 100 home 200 home 300 home Two, three million. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Okay, I think if they can make so much money, if I can just make 10% of what they make, yeah, I'll be good. So that's where I'm like, you know what? If I'm gonna do it, I wanna learn. So I went to the coaching, I signed up for coaching. I didn't really have money, but uh, from there, after a couple of years, I went to another company because I want, it's more of a Mike Fury oriented company. I went there, production didn't really move because I was still just under their coaching program, selling about 15, 18 homes a year. Okay in our area and above average yeah okay, I, make, I make about 150 to 180 a year yeah um, and you're, nowhere, and you're, you're still pretty young to be pulling in that kind of money so you're I was 20 something 20 something yeah. 30 something yeah but i was frustrated because i learned the most frustrating thing is to be at where you are year after year not mm -hmm. seeing improvement i was frustrated a lot and uh, so 2019 four years ago i was looking around and i was working on a saturday prospecting right i saw one of my client i'm sorry one of my colleagues she does pretty good transactions and uh, she was still grinding on a saturday and i was like you know what i think i may need to change the environment because she sells a lot of homes i'm like even if i sell 50 60 homes a year do I still need to grind doing open houses when I'm 60 and 70? So I'm like, I don't know if I want that. So I thought about, I may need a new environment. And uh, that was when my buddy, John Sai, oh, <laughs> he's okay. in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. in Vancouver. He was selling about 150 homes a year. And I, I met him from Mike Ferry event before. And we're both Taiwanese and we even hung out in Taiwan before. So we're good friends. And then he moved to EXP and he said, Jack, you should look into EXP too. too. And I was like, sure. Just, I would take a look at it. And after I saw it, I was like, oh, very interesting, very different. Because four years ago, nobody really heard about EXP. Yeah, sure. So he goes, if I were to join, he would coach me and mentor me. And then I was like, then what's there to think about? No brainer. Usually you don't really get somebody that sell over a hundred home that will coach you or mentor you. If you want somebody like that, you got to pay a thousand to 150 or maybe 2000 a month. Who, and by the way, he is, uh, what is president of Canada now? EXP, That's president true. EXP Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should say that president of EXP Canada, not of the, uh, not of the country. Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, yeah. So fast. So basically that was when I decide to take the leap of faith to trade my fear with faith. I learned that from Tony Robbins. Yeah. A lot of times we don't make decisions because of fear, but when we think about what are the best possible outcome by making the decision, and that's when I was like, you know what, let's give it a try. So I made the move. Right on. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. What are your uh, What are your three favorite things about EXP? I think number one would be collaboration for sure. <laughs> Like I know collaboration sounds so vague, but I really think back in my first 10 year of my career, I, yes, I have colleagues in the office and uh, that I would talk to, but usually people who sell, there isn't that many agents sell more than 50 homes in my market yeah. in our area because we're more higher price point. And uh, so you don't really have the, many of those. Even if you do, they're very busy. They don't have time for you or I don't want to bother them. Actually, yeah. I feel bad at bothering them. And uh, so like, Collaboration, meaning having opportunity to learn, mastermind with somebody, somebody like John, like Chris Bear, like Brent Go, yep. like Kenny Fast. He actually came to our event like two, three weeks ago just to educate our agents. And, and Sean Kokoska, he flew over just to educate our agents. I don't see that in any other companies. Yeah, it's brilliant. They will share their secret with you, like their listening presentation. Like one time I hired, I had my wife to work with me initially to help me with assistant work. And first time hiring, yeah. John told me, you, you need to hire one, you need to hire one. And then so he, I got one and I'm like, okay, now I got one. What do I have her do? <laughs> and then we usually we have to Google, right? Yeah. Maybe now we can chat GPT, but he goes, you know what? Why don't we just get on the Zoom with my assistant? Awesome. So we get on, you just share with us all the tools. So what's number two? Number two would be having fun. 
I would say. And working in, because currently, locally, we have about 200 agents in our group. Okay. So we learn, we grow, but we also have fun together. Awesome. Yeah, we have quarterly happy hours and we'll just hang out and just party sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. And then what's number, what's number three? Having a retirement plan. Yeah. Having a retirement plan. Because a normal model, like you, have, you only make commission, you make commission, you're on this transaction treadmill, but here we have alternative streams of income, like rev share, like stock, yeah. which I don't see that in any other company in South there. That's awesome. Well, there's a great thing is you get that for doing the same things that you're already doing. You're already gonna sell real estate, so when you sell a ton of it, you get stock. There's actually five different ways that you can get stock, but they're all doing the same things that you're already doing. Um, yep. You get paid rev share for really for just, you see a great agent, you say, hey, you know what? I love the brokerage I'm at. Do you love the brokerage you're at? Do, would you like help growing your business? Exactly what we were talking about, how you got to eXp. You, somebody came alongside you and helped you grow your business and you shared that. Next mm -hmm. thing, you, know, you have an opportunity to not only help somebody else grow their business, but then earn a residual for the rest of their career. It's pretty great. It's, pretty, it's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, we talk to agents anyways. And then there are times that we're screwing around anyways. We all yeah. know that. Everybody know that. <laughs> And why not, if you're gonna have a side hustle, why not do something that you're already doing every day? Totally great, right. it's awesome. Jack, as we wrap up, are any uh, any parting thoughts, anything that we haven't talked about that you want to make sure you share with the audience? I would say, I know the first thing I talked about is more, you mentioned like how to be a good human. Yeah. And obviously in, in this career, the skill side is very important. Yeah. Right? So it's simple two things, skill and mindset, right? So work on your skill, but anybody can work on their skill. It's about, are you really intentionally setting your goals on what you are trying to achieve in three to five, 10 years. Like for me, I wrote my own obituary. Good. Like, Cause that's ultimately we're all gonna pass away one day. Yeah. So who do we want to be remember us when we pass away? Cause that's our destination. And then backtrack it to today. Like, what do I need to do today in the next 30 days, next 90 days? so that I'm moving toward my future goal. I think that's very important. Um, begin, begin with the end in mind. Keep growing, because it's all about who you're becoming. And most importantly, actually, enjoy the process. Yeah. Please, enjoy the journey. We're never gonna have enough, but it's about pay, balancing. In it, it, it's not easy in it initially yeah. to balance your work-life balance. Just know something, you're always gonna be in balance, but don't forget, you're working for your family. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your, your, your business is here to, to fund your life, not yeah. to be your life. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, Jack, you've been amazing. So we've got your socials. So we'll make sure and tag you and include links to in the description on how people reach you. Hey guys, if you're watching and you're thinking about making a move to LA, to the LA area, then I know Jack would love to serve you. So we'll include links to how, we, how you find him in, in the description. Jack, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, any questions, whatever you guys have, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Right on. Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, you're great.